If you are just starting out with creative concepts that are a little bit more out of the box and on the technology side, it can be challenging to prototype something together, especially when you're focused on the creative part of it and you're not really a software engineer or familiar with how to bring things together technically. A while ago, I worked on a really cool project where I combined sensors, projection mapping and generative AI into an interactive installation, which I called Envisage or AKA the magic bookshelf. The bookshelf, it holds multiple books and when you pick up one of the books, it starts playing a visualization of the book's description that's usually on the back. It was actually a really complex project and in this video, I would like to walk you through my setup. I will start with the general concept and the overall setup, then I will tell you about the AI video creation. Next I will explain to you how I worked with sensors, so the sensor setup that I did with Arduino. Then I will dive into my physical setup of creating this interaction inside of a room. And lastly I will talk about my digital setup where I use projection mapping in Touch Designer. I'm timestamping all these chapters so if you want to skip to a specific part you just go into the description and you can find there the different chapters. So I worked out this concept with a very low budget. It was actually part of my master's program at Prague City University. And I hope it inspires you to start tinkering with the things you have available to you, even when it seems impossible to combine. So a little bit about this project. I was interested in the idea of the library of the future and I developed the concept of visualizing book descriptions based on a research that I did that showed that actually people do judge a book by its cover, especially in the fiction genre. People prefer to have some inviting visuals that attracts them to the story. For the final exhibition of the Future Design program, we actually had this space available to exhibit. And since I always wanted to create an interactive installation, I wanted to create a prototype of the library of the future. So for the overall setup, I imagined a dark, empty room where on the back wall you would just have one bookshelf. And once you would pick up one of the books, it would start playing the visualization all over the walls. This project, it was in 2022, and even though generative AI had not really made its big entrance to the industry yet, it was already my favorite topic. And I would use a little bit of Python scripting and Google Colab to combine multiple AI models together. Here you can see the models that I used and combined. I started with an OCR that takes the text from an image. Then I analyzed this text with a model called Roberta on emotion value. And I also extracted keywords with another model called Keybert. Next to using these models, I used some text processing that was simply splitting the sentences and removing names and special characters. I initially also wanted to use the emotion values that came out of Roberta model to generate sounds. But honestly, the sounds that got out, that I got from one of the sound creation models back then was so creepy and so useless that I decided to leave it out. I led the pieces of text into a prompt of a disco diffusion model to create these kinds of animations from text input. The quality that we had two years ago was nowhere close to what we have today, but it fitted really well to not having too much detail and leaving a lot up to the imagination of the reader. So the disco diffusion model, it spit out video frames. So the post-processing was mainly stitching those frames together and using a model called film to interpolate between the frames. So making a really smooth transitions. Right now, there are a ton of tools out there, including text to video that make this process much faster and much easier. But this was all we had back then. And also the outcome was kind of nice and mysterious, which really set a nice mood for the book description without revealing too much. One more thing I did for post-processing was using a video mask in After Effects to kind of create this nice spinning beginning of the video and of course adding the sound. 
I ordered a small bag of light sensors from Amazon that I attached to my Arduino boards to give me simple values of dark or light per sensor. And it would update every 50 milliseconds so that it would give me an update on which sensor would be in the light or in the dark. Actually, this step took quite a bit of time to figure out, but after I was able to parse the data inside of Touch Designer with a dot or data module, I could quite easily connect the videos to these values with a simple if statement. If sensor one is in the light, rest is in the dark, it would play video one. If sensor five would be in the light, it would play video five. Let's talk about the physical setup. I collected a bunch of books that I wanted to display on my shelf that I thought had a nice story to visualize. And I picked up a nice shelf for Marketplace for five euros. The only important requirement that I had for the shelf was that it needed a compartment that could be closed off that I could put my laptop inside and Arduino and the things that I need there like USB ports and electricity. Then I drilled holes inside of the shelf where I would glue with hot glue the sensors that lead to the Arduino and I would place lights above this strip so that there was a clear contrast between dark and light. And lastly, I actually also created a lock on the doors of this shelf so that if I would walk away from this room, my laptop could not just be stolen. I was actually really lucky to get help from the university with building a wall inside of the space where we were exhibiting because there was no closed off space and it was kind of the main requirement of my installation. So we had some people coming over to build this wall, but I think the most challenging part was getting rid of the light coming from the windows and the light above the wall because the wall was only built at a certain height and there was a big gap I had to close off. So for that, I had to buy some fabric, uh, put there multiple layers. I could not drill into the ceiling, so I had to tape everything, use ropes and clamps to hang everything together. But it worked out in the end and I'm very happy it did. And inside of the room, I also of course hang a projector. It wasn't able to cover all of the walls, but at least the back wall, which was good enough for me. And then I installed some speakers on the floor that would provide the sound. My Touch Designer project is probably the part that I'm the most excited about. It's a really fun program for tinkering with all kinds of setups and all kinds of projects combining into one. So it actually it takes the sensor input and it turns on and off the right videos. And when no video is playing, it would play this video that I created in After Effects with simple text to pick up a book. But to display this text on the right position, and also not to display the videos on the wall on top of the shelf, I had to do some projection mapping. And I had never done projection mapping before, but it was really fun to try it out at home with some shelves that we had on the wall. And also Touch Designer made it quite easily to just drag the corners of parts to the right places. So let's talk about the end result. It was a huge success. Actually, the audience was very engaged and really I got a lot of compliments and I was very proud of it. But mostly I really enjoyed the process and I wanted to share it with you so that you might feel inspired to try new things and to combine different ideas. I still have all the codes and the assets and the touch designer project. So if you want a head start with a similar project, I can give this to you through my Patreon. I've created a really nice folder with all the assets and things you need and even some extra instructions. And also it would really support me on my way to growing a creative technology business. And I have more projects in mind that I want to share over video and I will be posting all my assets through there. But if you are just interested in following my journey, you can also of course subscribe to my newsletter, which I will link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.